Okay, so just to give you an example, and this will be on an abstract level, but just to discuss the idea of what we can do with a model, I have drawn a small state machine diagram, uh, very similar to the UML state machine notation, that basically shows an application where you handle customers. It could be a web page, it could be a standalone desktop application. And uh, we have a login, so once the, uh, the state machine starts, we have a login and we show the customer list uh, and we can log out, then we're done. Uh, and then we have two options at the moment. We can add a customer through the add operation and then we go back to the page and we can delete a customer uh, which requires an additional confirm step and then if it's confirmed we go back to the customer list, if it's aborted we also go back. Uh, and of course you would expect that if we confirm the deletion then there is a customer less here, if we abort it it's the same. If we add a customer it should actually add a customer in the list. So what could we theoretically do with this? So first of all, of course, we have to be able to understand this, so it has to follow a, a certain notation and we have to have this in a modeling file so that we, for example, can get all the states. We know what the relations are between the states, we know the actions, uh, so we can start processing this automatically. Now, what we could do is, for example, generate a web page. We could say that each of these boxes, each state, is a single page. Uh, so then we can just generate the standard HTML code for each page. We might have a certain layout. Uh, we're using, for example, diffs, so we're using Bootstrap to, to lay out this. We have certain colors. We could do all of that automatically. Um, then we have the relations between the web pages. So we know at least that there is some kind of add action that brings us from the initial page to the next. Uh, and if we have a standardized way to go from one page to another, for example, a menu, we could just automatically add this to the menu, like a button that says add. Uh, and if it's clicked, it goes here. Same for delete then. And then we already have a page flow. So we have certain things that are related to each other. And then of course we need to work with the actual data. So that's then a bit more tricky because we need to know what is a customer, does a customer, what kind of attributes does a customer have, and then we need to have uh, that generated automatically. So this would actually require to have another model of the customer. Can we uh, have that? If we have another model of the customer, we could even generate this page automatically, add all the fields that the customer requires, uh, validate them because we know what is required, what is not. Uh, we know what the data types are maybe, so we can also check that. And then uh, we could actually add that automatically. Similar with deletion, if we, if we know the underlying data structure, we could actually uh, make a delete page, show the customers and uh, make sure they're deleted and have a confirm dialogue that could be a standard dialogue. Uh, there's an obvious issue with this, especially if we talk about websites, and that's nowadays that UX user interfaces in general are getting quite customized and they're quite important, so maybe you don't want to generate that. And that's completely fine. Uh, it's just to give you an example of what you could do. But if we, for example, talk about a desktop application, and I've earlier talked about information systems, uh, in these kind of systems you also have these flows, they're very common, uh, and very often you just go for the standardized dialogue instead of trying to come up with a fancy uh, user experience, but at least you can recognize how the uh, flow is similar in different use cases. So that's one thing we could do here, we can actually generate the, the page flow. Uh, another thing we could do is try to generate test cases. So uh, we know the states and we know if a certain action happened where we should get so we can actually generate test cases for that we could go in each of these relations for each of the relation we could generate one test that says if you're in this state and you call add then you should end up in this state uh, if you're in the confirm step and you actually confirm then there should be an additional customer in the list and you should end up in this state you can do more complex things, you can do more integration system tests by actually going through several states. So if you're in the customer list and you uh, press delete on one customer and you confirm, then you should end up back in this state and the customer should be deleted. Um, what do we need for this? First of all, again, of course, we have to have a formal diagram. We need to be able to process this. Uh, we need to be able to know in which state we are so that we can actually write our assertions. We, we need to know, okay, we are in this state or in this state. Uh, 
and we need to be able to call these actions. So we need to know how do these names here actually map to real events in the system. For example, is this just a method call that we can call? We need to know that. Uh, and then finally, uh, we need certain instrumentation to uh, get the testing done properly. For example, if we want to test the step from delete customer to confirm, we need a way to set up the test automatically that we end up in the delete step, that we don't start here first. So these are the kind of things we might, need, might want to have uh, in our instrumentation and our testing framework. Uh, but if you have this and you can of course reach this, then this is a very nice tool to automatically generate tests that can be quite complicated. I mean, you can go two or three times through this loop or you can do this action and then delete. Uh, if you write all of these tests by yourself, it will take you a lot of time and it's very repetitive. So there's a good chance that you do copy and paste errors, for example. And then maybe as a final use case here, uh, this is a diagram. You need to roughly know what this means. You need to know the notation, but we could also generate documentation from this. So. Uh, given that we understand this diagram, that we know what language it is, that it's a formal file, we can just generate text that describes this. For example, you can write down requirements that say, if you're showing the customer list and uh, the user chooses delete, you should show the customers, uh, delete customer screen instead. So you could generate these kind of documentation uh, artifacts automatically. For example, if you need to have some kind of documentation for the user or for some other stakeholder. Uh, so just based on this state machine diagram, you could do a lot of different things uh, by having a model compared to when you just have an image. So that's the power of it. If you really want to know how these things work in detail, uh, I will make one example in, in another video where I actually show some, some modeling and coding, how we can generate things. But uh, this is definitely also beyond the scope of the course, so for that you would have to take an advanced course on model-based or model-driven engineering where you really go into the techniques of how is this done in practice.